Hello guys and welcome to this Volks Wizard video and it's a really exciting video today because it's the first time on this channel we're going to feature a car that runs on electricity. Now as a petrol head you may think this isn't of any interest to you but this is coming you cannot bury your head in the sand any longer. Next year we get the Volkswagen ID3 and there are billions of pounds invested in Volkswagen Group products to make them electric so it's going to happen and we just need to give it a chance and what better way to start your e-mobility journey than with a car like the Golf GTE because it looks very familiar it looks like a Golf GTI to all intents and purposes we also get the MQB platform which as you know from all the MP MQB cars Golf R, Golf Club Sport S, Seat Leon Cooper it's a really good platform okay it's a bit heavier but bearing in mind how good this platform is a bit of weight and a slightly less dynamic performance in the chassis actually still means we've still got a really good handling car as we'll find later. Now I was a cynic about these things but somebody came around in one of these, let me drive it briefly, and I was very intrigued and then coincidentally a week later somebody offered me one and I couldn't really say no, I wanted to spend a bit more time with it so I could get to grips with it and then I could share what I think about this very intriguing car with you in this video. So without any further ado let's have a closer look at this Mark 7.5 Golf GTE Advance. Okay, let's start off with a brief overview of the Golf GTE. So this came out in 2015 on the Mark 7 Golf platform. It's basically a petrol electric hybrid. So we have a 1.4 TSI 150 horsepower petrol engine coupled to a 100 horsepower electric motor. And they're both controlled by a six speed DSG gearbox. Now, unfortunately they don't produce 250 horsepower as a maximum peak when they're working together because the electric motor and the engine produce their peaks at different times. So we only get 204 horsepower as a maximum peak for the car with both of them working together but that's not that bad really because the Mark 5 Golf GTI only produced 200 horsepower okay it's a bit lighter but 0 to 60 time of this car as tested by Neil Burkett was 7.1 seconds which was I think a bit quicker than the 7.5 that Volkswagen quote as the official time but 7.1 really is not slow that's quite a good time I reckon it would give a Mark 4 Golf R32 a really hard time both in a straight line and on a country road because this has got an MQB chassis we know this chassis works really well I mean the Club Sport S tells you everything you need to know it's basically the same chassis as the Club Sport S it's dealing with a hell of a lot more weight of course but it's still a brilliant chassis and yes the weight isn't ideal but you still have a car that is really really nice to drive as we'll find out later now being a 7.5 this car gets all the facelift changes so the more aggressive bumpers and we've got the gesture control infotainment inside and the active info display the digital instrument cluster at the front you may think it looks like a gti but there are a couple of differences that i really want to point out apart from the blue stripe when it should be red etc now firstly we've got c-shaped daytime running lights in the bumper these originally were used on the e-golf the fully electric car so if you see them on a golf it means that the car is either a hybrid or an electric car you won't see them on a normal gti or gtd the other thing you may have noticed is that the car still has the radar in the bottom grille which was deleted for the 7.5 Golfs. Now you may wonder why has it got the radar still there? Well that's because behind the badge where the radar is located on the newer cars is the charging point for the battery. So in there goes the charging plug which is attached to a cable. There are two of these supplied with the GTE, one for a three pin plug and one for a fast charger. Just push that in there. It does, it does lock into place. And nobody can remove that until you press unlock on the car. You can actually hear it unlocking like a door. And that's out. So put it in again, you'll hear it lock like that. And now it can't be removed. It's gone to green there, so it means it's charging. Fine, now you can, there's a really good app that will show you about the charging status of the car or you can just look at the dashboard which is what we're going to do so in there you can see the green lights flashing and you can see we've got an hour and a half of charging to go because we're only half full it says 15 miles to go it looks like a petrol pump but it's actually got a plug on the end of it instead of a nozzle so that's the electric range is 15 miles while we've got the door open let's have a look inside so the first thing i want to point out is this car has got the brilliant art velours trim this is about 700 quid extra and it means you don't have to have leather if you don't like tartan and this is really nice if I was looking for a GTI or GTD to keep I'd be looking for this trim another little oddity of the GTE is that you've got a button to release the petrol flap 
but she's got a little bit of delay on it. Now I wonder if this is to do with like a safety thing to get rid of any static or anything like that from the electric bits of the car. It's really weird because normally on a on a seven seven point five you just do that, but you have to press that. So there we go. That's one of the few changes. The other change is in the boot. So it looks pretty normal now, but by the way, these are the charging cables. So they come in these bags which take up room. That's your toolkit. Reminds me of a Volkswagen up with a Beats sand pack where you can't have that in the spare wheel because there's no room. And that's your tyre foam and pump. So there's no spare wheel on these. That's a bit of a compromise then with the GTE because under there is your petrol tank. And where the petrol tank normally is under the back seat is where the battery is. So there is a compromise with the GTE and that's the fact the boot's quite small. You can still fold the seats down. It's still a big-ish boot, but it's not as big as it would be in a Golf. And there might be situations where you might find this higher boot floor can cause you problems. But apart from that, it's all familiar Golf and it's all pretty lovely. This is an advanced model, so it doesn't really mean much apart from the fact you get 18s, a bigger infotainment screen, some tinted glass, and oddly heated seats. I say oddly because they've been standard on GTI and R and GTD since 2016 in the Mark 7 period, but on these they're optional. Probably no bad thing because they do use a lot of electricity. Okay, let's have a look at the rest of the car. So, as I say, it's really nice and familiar. 7.5 is a really nice evolution of Golf now, I think. So we've got the active info display now on these cars i'm just going to actually open the windows because it's a particularly warm day i don't know if you can see on there 27 degrees a good day for driving electric though because they're at their most efficient apart from the fact the aircon is going to be working overtime right so we've got because we've got all this tech here we've got a few different things to a gti so basically here we're running in e-mode which is pure electric mode. The car's not actually running at the moment. When it is, it says ready, but there's nothing else to tell you that it's running, it's silent. And when you put your foot down, that's how much power you're using. And that green zone there is if you put it in regenerative, regenerative braking mode by putting the shifter back, a bit like selecting sport mode, it does, it brakes. Instead of you pressing the brakes, the car slows down and harvests any energy that it would otherwise waste in heat from the brake discs as electricity. So you can charge the car up slowly by doing that, but it's always more efficient to charge the car by plugging it in. Uh, if you then go to say GTE mode, this changes. So we've got a rev counter. It can still harvest energy. So you've still got the charging mode there below. So the needle actually goes behind zero when it's charging. So that's pretty cool. We've got basically a petrol gauge that's your normal, that's half full at the moment roughly. We've also got the same thing for battery which is pretty cool. So full is there, we're just over half full because we're on 16 miles and uh, yeah that's pretty trick. I think, what else have we got? I'm no expert on these so this is all standard. Mark 7.5 should I say. That's a vehicle status. So ch we're plugged in, we've got the charger charging plug connected and door open. Somebody used to rip their quarter panel off on a, I think it was a Mitsubishi by driving off when they're still plugged in. So it'd be interesting to know if you can do that in this car. Don't even know if you can start it. Everything must be foolproof. So let's, let's put it into E mode where it's silent electric and see what happens. Yeah, that's really clever then. So it won't let you start the engine if you're charging. That's pretty useful because sitting here, I can't see that I'm plugged in, so that's that's really good. Okay, let's just have a look at these modes then. So instead of a drive mode, we've got GTE mode, which bangs it straight into the sportiest mode. It's a bit like driving in race or sport mode. We haven't got adaptive dampers on this car, so it doesn't make the suspension any harder, but it does mean that the steering gets heavier, the engine's a little bit fruitier, and we're running, most importantly, in electric mode and petrol mode, but we'll come to that with driving. What else have we got then? Can we change that? to e modes right hybrid is the default mode really so it uses electric and petrol either together or separately to their optimum battery hold mode just maintains the, the current state of charge so if you really want to keep it at 16 and not use any of that it will leave it at that and then when you get to the somewhere where you want to run it on electric 
you can just use it knowing it's all there. And battery charge mode is very inefficient, as I said earlier, but this will charge the battery up while you're driving um, actively. Obviously, the other way to do that is to do regenerative braking, but this that method uses the energy of the engine to charge the battery, which is a bit like robbing Peter to pay Paul, so not a brilliant idea. Um, I think that's it, really. I think we just need to get down to the nitty-gritty of driving this car because it doesn't drive like any other Golf. So without any further ado, let's go and drive the Smart 7.5 Golf GTE Advance. Okay, guys, here we are behind the wheel of the Golf GTE Hybrid. Now, I think the first thing that I really want to demonstrate to you is driving the car in pure electric mode because the performance thing is all well and good, but this mode is what makes this car so special. There aren't many other cars that can run in full electric and yet still prove enjoyable to drive on a British B road, which we'll find out shortly. So the car's in E mode now. I can tell because it, the light down here is illuminated on the centre console. And to start it, I have to turn the key. It's not a keyless car, this which is probably just as well because it's so quiet, not having a key in would be even more confusing anyway. That's it, we get a little bong to say the car's ready to go. It says ready on the dashboard in green. All you have to do is select drive. I'm laughing because the first time I drove it, I forgot you had to put it into drive. And that's a lot of road noise because there's tractors and stuff, but can you hear anything now? Because this is the engine running. This is a motor ready to go, so. Press the throttle, it'll release the electric parking brake. And off we go. So you can hear the shocks compressing, you can hear the brake disc rubbing a bit. But there is nothing else. We've got 26 miles range. I had to have bought a bit early the charging, but we've got most of a full battery. I was going to say full tank then. We've actually got just under half a tank of fuel. And here we are driving. So in this respect, it drives perfectly normally. I've got the windows open because it's a really hot day and this black car's got really hot but also because the air conditioning does take some of the range away so currently it says 26 miles if I turn the aircon on it's gone down to 21 miles straight away to be fair that's max aircon so let's just switch that bit off let's go into auto mode 23 so we've lost a fair few miles because of that I think I'll run with the aircon on I'll shut the windows now the beauty of this car is that, apart from being a GTE Advance, it's also got a few other options, one of which is the panoramic glass sunroof. Now this means that on less hot days, it's 27 degrees still now, you can run with the pan roof just cracked open at the back, and that gives you most of the ventilation you need, and it's not taking any of the power away from the car, it's barely adding to any drag as well, if you, especially if you're driving at slow speeds, so that's what I think about but today. It's a bit too hot for that. Right then, so we're just rolling along now, 40 miles an hour. The adaptive cruise works in the same way, so we can set that. You can do that in traffic jams as well. It'll take you down to nothing and start up again. So it's perfectly normal. Now, what's really important that you take advantage of when you're driving a hybrid or an electric car, actually, is to use the regenerative braking. So if, I'll just stop the cruise now because we've gone into a 30. Instead of using the brake, you just pop the car into B mode and the car slows down by itself because instead of you having to press the brakes where the brake pads are used against the disc and you just get heat, the car engages a bit like um, a generator and uses the rotational energy of the wheels to produce electricity and, and add to the battery. That's really clever. Now that's not a default mode so you need to engage that manually every time they drive, drive the car. I bet the engineers really wanted that to be default, but it would make the car feel peculiar to people when in every other respect driving in this electric mode feels perfectly normal. And it's not gutless, okay, 0 to 60 in pure electrics, about 12 seconds, but it's still really easy to drive on most roads. You can apparently do up to 80 miles an hour. Obviously, I wouldn't know in the UK because it's 70, but basically you can do up to the UK's speed limit in pure electric mode. Obviously, I, don't, I can't guarantee you could do 70 miles an hour for 25 miles because it's probably going to deplete the battery a bit sooner. But you get the drift. It's, uh, it's perfectly enjoyable to drive in fully electric mode, as I will show you. So, yeah, the silence. I mean, engineers have worked tirelessly to make petrol and even diesel cars refined. And yet, you switch to electric and you cannot hear anything. There might be the very distant 
sort of whirring whistling of a motor but in most situations you can hear nothing you think a Lexus is quiet this is just in a in a different league now what I didn't appreciate was the electric gear the electric motor still runs gears so you can the paddles still work um, but it's so talky it's almost pointless to just leave it in to work itself out so it's still in electric mode 100% use I'll just put the window up so we're quite happily doing 60 and the speed limit right now is 70 so I'm doing 70 in fully electric mode perfectly comfortably just close that roof now okay just entering road work so we'll slow it down a bit and we'll do that we're in B mode so it's braking itself now I've not seen the battery range go up from B mode driving where the brakes are charging it yet, but I've not really done that many miles in that mode. I've just been commuting to and from home in fully electric mode, and I've been very impressed with the way it drives. It's just, you look at other cars and you think, well, for city use, this makes a lot of sense. What you really want to do is, is have a commute that's about the top of the range of the electric, so about 20 miles, plug it in, at work, drive home, plug it in there, and then you're getting, you could drive, you know, you do your commute up to about 20 miles, purely on electric mode, which means the car's getting infinite miles per gallon. It measures MPG with the petrol you use. If you never use petrol, it's infinite. If you do your commute on electric and do your commute back on petrol, then instead of getting the 40 to 50 miles per gallon this engine would normally produce, you'll double that because you've done twice the distance using half the petrol. That's how the MPG works on a hybrid like this. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, I think this car's running passive dampers. It hasn't got dynamic chassis control. That's the one thing I'd probably order because I love DCC and I think when the car's a bit heavier than standard, it's, it's quite important to have that. But we're only running 18 inch wheels and I'd say it's more comfortable than a Golf on 19s, even though this car's heavier. but it's just incredible the way it picks up speed. I mean, I know this isn't fast, but it's silent and it's so talky because the electric motor picks up instantly. There's no of this like air coming in and petrol going in and things moving. It just shifts. So. So that's purely electric. So I think even though it's 100 horsepower, it feels like a more powerful engine in the traditional sense if it was internal combustion. That bodes well for GTE mode, which we'll find out. Uh, the brakes on this car aren't particularly massive. I think they're the same as standard GTI, so not performance, um, which probably means they'll get cut quite easily, bearing in mind the extra weight. Let's just do a standing start then. So I'm not in launch control or anything. I don't even, don't even know if there is one. So let's just floor it. <laughs> wow. Okay, the petrol engine's kicked in now because I've gone beyond a kick down points. So, you know, it won't let you down if you need more power. It'll just engage the petrol engine. But that initial acceleration was, I've got to say, pretty impressive just because it's so talky. It still wants to run the petrol engine. I think we're in hybrid mode now automatically, but it's switched back to electric. It's gone while well. you're driving slowly. So we're back onto pure electric now. And we're going down a big hill. So I'd imagine it's more efficient to drive on the flat where you don't get regenerative braking because we have to go back up this hill and that uses quite a lot of power. Um, but at least you're getting some benefit from the downhill section as well. But it's so quiet, it's amazing. You do hear a lot more of the car. I mean, one of the things this car does and another GT I've driven with a pan roof does is that you can hear the roof rattling a bit. It's not particularly annoying, but you can hear suspension compressing, brake discs, um, motors working. Thankfully, the wipers are quite silent. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll do this B-road in electric mode 
it's um, I think it's a 60 mile an hour road you've probably seen it before in my videos so just coming up to the end of the 30 so I'll give it the beans then and hopefully we'll try not to get about past the kickdown point so that's it so that's still 100% electric and you know it turns in quite sharply we're not in GTE mode so the steering feels a bit too artificially light but it's okay and that is the speed limit now so can we have fun in fully electric mode I honestly don't know what there is to fear because they accelerate well okay then it's a bit quiet this car does actually have a little button on the center console where you can get it to make a noise but you won't it won't add to the emotion of driving not 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 yet not until they do a lot of work on it so you know this is good I mean we've got a corner coming up can I get some thrills from it yeah that was nice typical MQB neutrality it did feel a bit heavy probably a little bit more than a an R say I think I drove the GTD estate down here and it felt close to that that wasn't the sharpest of the MQB cars I've driven but remember they're really sharp cars so they've got a bit of room to be less dynamic and this car's perfectly fine But what I really want to do is drive this road in GTE mode because that's where this car really shows you it can still be fun. You know, it's still a GT car. So let's try and turn around here. Okay, there's some slow traffic going up there, so we'll just let them go. So GTE mode means press that button there, fires up the petrol engine. We've got charging the battery, 14 miles of it, so it will engage the two together, giving us maximum performance. So yeah, this is the important bit. Obviously the electric mode is perfectly adequate. You can still enjoy driving in it, but does this go to where an enthusiastic driver would be happy? Well, let's find out. So a bit of wheel spin there. So it makes a good noise now, it's made, it's got a bit of a sound generator going on, but the 1.4 TSI obviously makes a lot more noise than the motor. We're up to the speed limit now, and I'm just using the paddles to change gear like I would do normally. And this, this feels fast. In the same way a lot of MQB cars do, it's got a bit more compression over those bumps, less body control than those cars but can we turn in here nicely yeah and again it still retains that lovely rear end liveliness that we found to be quite the norm in the MQB cars and which makes them so lovely and neutral to chuck around it's quite a big car the Golf 7.5 that's why I'm doing it on this road and not the smaller road that I normally use that GTI is on but this is more typical of a British B road. It's quite flowing, it's quite fast. The corners are sharpish, but in a good car, you can kind of take them at a reasonable lick. This one's a bit of a tricky off camber, and again, it's good. So 0 to 67.1, that's way quicker than up GTI. Obviously quite a bit slower than the 7.5 GTI and other faster derivatives, but it's still not bad. The weight, is certainly apparent but I don't think it ruins proceedings not least because the neutrality of the MQB cars is still there it will you'll feel the rear end helping you go around corners I think that's really important because yeah the weight is kind of unavoidable when you when you've got an electric motor and a normal engine but if the, if the chassis still feels to be as composed in most situations as a standard car then I think that's that's pretty good so at the starting point, the GTE is a remarkable car. Okay, yeah, there are better performance car avail cars available and they are cheaper, but there aren't many that will let you drive to work on electricity up to 20 miles each way with a charge in between, obviously. And you have no range anxiety. If, you, if, you, if you're worried about range, you've got petrol. It's not the most efficient thing to carry both around. I think in time when infrastructure gets better, we don't have to worry about going places in fully electric cars and not being able to charge, which could take a long time judging by the way things are going, then hybrids may become obsolete. But for the moment, and probably for the next 10 years, according to the boss of Bentley, hybrids make a lot of sense. And today, for me, this Golf GTE is probably one of my favorite cars 
at the moment. Okay guys, I hope you've enjoyed this Volks Wizard video, the first one featuring an electric car. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Please comment. It'd be really interesting to know what you think about this car because obviously it's such a new concept and it'd be great to get your feedback. Please share, please subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one really soon.